Speak, Lord, speak to me. Ooh, speak, Lord, speak to me. Save my soul. When you came, mm -hmm. God is trying to tell you something. Can't sleep at night. Oh, and I wonder why. Telling you, God, God is trying to tell you something. Oh. Crying all night long. I just wanna do that little hum, that little ditty. Y'all come on and roll with me a little bit. Kevin, what's up, bro? Darren Palmo, what's good, bro? Y'all come on in here. I'm not gonna make this video long. I ain't gonna get, I ain't gotta take long to say what I got to say. Uh so uh, you know. I just kind of, I made my video on the 6th, today's the 10th, about uh, when Kevin Samuels passed away. And, <clears throat> and when people, I guess you realize now that he's becoming even bigger in death, just as, I mean, even more than life. He was big in life. And he's uh, becoming even bigger. And now, it was interesting how in death, all of a sudden, when a person passes away who's viewed as controversial, nobody didn't want to touch it. And invite them on their shows. I mean, ma mainstream shows. ABC, CBS, Fox, uh, none of them. MSNBC and some of these so-called celebrity YouTubers, they didn't have on the show. I know here in Dallas and I'm sure in Memphis, none of the hip-hop stations ever mommed his word except for they want to say something negative, right? Now he's gone, everybody wants, everybody wants to talk about controversial YouTuber. Kevin Samuels, age 56. First of all, stop lying about his age, goddamn. He wasn't 56. He was born in 1969, just like me. We're, we were both, we are both 53. He was 53 years old when he passed. You know, damn 56. There was something else, let you know. You didn't know anything about the man. You didn't even know his birthday. Just putting stuff out there. And so, but luckily for him, and this may be a recurring theme for those brothers who stand up and speak out in society and everybody can't stand them. Not because they're making rap music that's right here cussing everybody out and wishing other black men to be dead and, and black women to be to bend over and twerk their ass and, and put some in their throat, throat babies and all that. No. He ain't created, he ain't around here creating no single mothers, eight mamas at a time, future, and, and Nick Cannon. He ain't doing none of that. But somehow he's the most hated among black women and the most envied in a negative way by a lot of these beta male simper man ass dudes. Somehow he was the problem in the black race? I don't think so. And so now he's on everybody's lips. Now there are those who are paying tribute respectfully, but that's, that's what he deserved. You didn't have to like everything he said. Yeah, now again, how do you go log on somebody's face YouTube channel or someone's Facebook page or their Instagram or their Twitter account? How do you log on, volunteer to log on to get offended? But see, as I said in my other video, there's an agenda afoot. It's always been there. And like Tommy Sotomayor and Minister Jap and others have always said, it's a large group of black women. Black women in this country are, are like the right hand of white supremacy. They, they're keepers of the gate because they want to be anointed his side bitch. The white man's side hoe. And then you have those who, have, who, don't know, who don't know jack about what his broadcast, his podcast were talking about. They didn't know anything. But still, they had, a, they had a, an opinion about. Somebody, they never, never even watched his videos, or if they did, they got like a three-minute snippet that gets to the punchline. And so there are those of us who watched the whole three-hour broadcast. There are those of us who, if we didn't read the, if we didn't pay attention to the live, we watched, we went back and watched the whole three hours or four hours. So there are a lot of people who have a lot of information, and we're listening to folks who never even listened to him have these opinions. Just these assumptions 
And it's not about his people who supported him or who appreciated his content coming out and acting like a bunch of cult followers. But we're talking about, let's be fair. And we can see what you're doing, mass media. You're purposely trying to put out a negative narrative to destroy his, his, his legacy. No, we're not going to let you Michael Jackson him. We're not going to let you uh, uh, Bill Cosby him. You're not going to let y'all destroy this particular, this black man's legacy. Because he has truly has a legacy so much so that it is spreading this new red pill, this new understanding of female nature. It's not about being mad at black women or trying to be against them. It's about this just arming brothers. Because black men for the past 50 years have been raised by mainly black women. And so a lot of these grown ass black dudes, they, they've been trained to be protectors of people who have never really had their best interests at heart. Of course not all. Hey Mary Max. Joel, what's up? So, this is what we're dealing with. And guess what? For those of you who got trash talk to talk about this man, it's not going on, on social media, it's not going to end well for you because we're out here lying and waiting for you to tell a lie. So we just we're not going to jump on you. We're just going to correct you. We're just going to correct you. And you guys who that have that that's got that feminine mindset listening to everything that angry women say and not the ones who's like, "You know what? That man was telling the truth." You don't listen to them, you get mad at them and call them pick me's. When he's actually standing up and speaking up for you. And for those of you who are upset about, for whatever reason, because for the first three years he was talking about black men and somehow that didn't go viral. That right, that in itself, black men should let you, you should be offended. He was talking three years to black men about their issues, about Becoming better men about dressing better, getting in shape, getting an education, go, um, uh, getting, rising up in your job, creating a business, behave a certain way in society so you can be looked at as respectful. Well, what is the crime? Come on, somebody. <laughs> in that, what was the crime in that? What was the crime? See, y'all should understand, pay attention to who the targets are in this country. It's not black women. The target is the black boys. Shout out to Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu. Shout out to Dr. Amos Wilson. Shout out to Dr. Frances Crest Wilson. Rest in power. See, y'all gonna pay attention to our scholars. They tried to tell y'all who the targets were under ra white racism and white supremacy. That's who it was. And see, I always real go back to what the scholars said. And the scholars tried to tell y'all over the past 100 years Try to tell black men and black women who were who were who would listen. The target and under white supremacy is the black boy, because when you destroy the black boy, you have crippled the grown man. And that's why I don't understand why we're not more protective, and honoring, and possessive of our boys. But see, when you got a white supremacist funding the feminist narrative in black women and women across America. Well, there you have it. The women feel so emboldened that they can talk stuff to black men and say these disparaging things. And we're not supposed to say anything. A lot of black men believe they're not supposed to say anything back. But Kevin Samuels came on the scene. Won't he do it? And he came with this thing called st statistics and data. Nothing emotional. Because a lot of us, we have these conversations with women, we argue like women. We argue screaming and cussing. That ain't true. I feel. I feel. I feel. That ain't true. I feel. It's not about feelings. I think in the manosphere, they, they have this thing called, that says, fuck your feelings. And that's right, Sister Shaharazad Ali and all of them. Thank you, Mary Max. I forgot about that sister. She always, and yeah, they try to cancel her too. So, <laughs> it's interesting. And all these angry folks. And it's... And we saw you on social media, ladies. Not all, but too many. And so now, you got celebrity blacks who, when he mentioned his name, got something to say. Meaning negative. We had, we got a few of them, like, even T.I. came out and said something positive. Well, thank you, T.I., but you still, I still feel, uh, think a certain way about you and your baby. But thank you for using your celebrity platform to speak the truth on the brother. Thank you, Marlon Wayans. You know, we need more celebrity black men to come out and say the man was right. Y'all think the truth is supposed to be told by Minister Farrakhan? 
Y'all think truth is supposed to be told by Malcolm X, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, and others? Sister Sarah Hazard, we got, there's a lot of room to tell the truth. But here's the thing. If your truth reaches the, reaches the masses of us, it begins to get us to change our minds, then you become a problem. Yeah, Kevin, I'm a, David A. Brown, what's up? Yeah, Kevin, I'm going to get to that help in a minute. And so, I just want to warn you on social media. You know, you think you can just put these lies out here? And in the past four days, all those lies have been just dispelled, disputed. You know, he wasn't with that heavy set Latina girl that's dressed naked from Instagram. Is actually a smaller woman. I think she was Latina too. They try to think of everything. He didn't die with no black woman. He was this. And <laughs> let me tell you something. Media takeout gonna try to push the rumor that a friend told him that he died broke. His family can only access a thousand dollars in his account. Now, this is a grown man. Why would y'all think his family would have access or even knowledge of where he put all his money? That didn't even make sense. <laughs> so I'm sure he probably let somebody know where the bulk of his estate is, the bulk of his money is. And let me please say this. Because we love these diversionary tactics. Again, I'm going to repeat like I did in my other video. You tried to gay them away. You tried to say hate black women away. You tried to do everything. But see, you cannot knock the truth. You can't make it stop. I know there's so many who wanted to. Then you have people that say, well, I don't know. I ain't never heard of him. I don't know what he's saying. But uh, anybody, anybody who disparages black women, why is it always about disparaging black women? Who who came up with that narrative that we need to shut the world down? People need to be punished. Hell, y'all worse than Jews and LGBT. Who, who, who the hell are they supposed to be? Damn trans. Who the hell are they supposed to be? And so they come around here thinking you ain't supposed to say nothing. You can say whatever you want to say about anybody. Hell, they're not, they're not without fault. You can say what you want to say about black women. Hell, they got more flaws than any goddamn body. But it's very interesting when people say, when they need to complain, he's saying these things about black women. I always ask, what did he say? Because I listen to all, damn near all of his videos. Because I'm, now I'm one of those who actually paid attention to what he was saying. And he was saying nothing disparaging. And those conversations he had on his radio show, his podcast, those were women who called in and asked him questions. And also, if you were an avid watcher, or even you watched the replay, he always said, I give the energy that you give me. Meaning, if you're going to be a bitch on the phone, I'm going to be a fool on the phone with you. That's not, that, doesn't that sound fair? You don't have to. You know, but black males have been taught that when their when they mama speak, you're supposed to be quiet, even though you grown. When black women in the room, no, no, no they ain't had this role. We all grown. Y'all equal now, remember? You fought for rights. You want equality. You want equal rights like men. And so that's how you've been addressed. But we still, we still act like we have not read any history. Andy Brown said, people hear what they want to hear. You're right, man. They do. But that's going to be over. Because, see, if we hear you putting out a lie against this man, we, and I mean a whole lot of us, are just going to check you, correct you. There ain't going to be nothing disrespectful or meaning, but we're going to give you the correct information like I'm doing right now. Let me give you the correct information. And there's many others. You got these little lame ass black dudes that's trying to uh <laughs> that's trying to pander to these hurt women out there. He said this about single mothers. He said this about women who are over 35. What he did was he told the truth. He told the truth. But see, we didn't pay attention to that because we want a lot of us run raised around men, men. We a lot of us was raised by replacements. A lot of us are raised by replacement. A lot of us weren't raised by real actual fathers who taught boys red pill, red pill information. You know, you are a man. She's supposed to be blessing your pimping. You ain't supposed to be bowing down to her. You are the prize. That's what he taught young men. He said, in order to make yourself valuable, you need to do the work. Get off your ass. Get in the gyms, brother. Get in the gym. Work out. Go to college. Go to get a vocation. Educate yourself, enrich yourself economically, 
That's what they talked about. So why so much vitriol? Why so much hate? After he's dead. Because a lot of you had no smoke for him when he was alive. You wouldn't call his show. You wouldn't mention him. But all of a sudden he's dead, you cowards. Now you got so much to say. And then especially the people who don't know absolutely nothing about him. Those are the ones that really trip me out. I don't know nothing about him, so, but, uh, but if you, when you start out that statement, I never watched this video, I don't know what, I, I've never heard anything he say, that's when you're supposed to stop, stop talking. That's when you're supposed to shut up. Because anything after that means that you're full of crap. And what do you say? Our music goes in on the culture and can be considered disrespectful. No one comments on that. That's right. Because Andy Brown speaks, you know what? Isn't that interesting how the very music that is the that is the theme music to the destruction of black folks, black boys and black men and, and, and the reputation and image of black women. Black women are the number two consumers of that very music. They pay these same men to call them bitches hoes for two hours in a concert and spend money on their CDs. They pay them to call them a bunch of bitches hoes. Kevin Samuels never did any of that. That's why, that's why we coming at y'all. No, we don't let y'all do that now. You know, we, we're just not going to let you do that because he didn't do any of the stuff. The, the stuff y'all need to be talking about, you, 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 you bend over and shake your ass to it. He ain't never sold no dope to black folks. He ain't never created no baby mamas. He ain't done none of that. He ain't one that did no gang violence in the black neighborhood. He ain't did no drive-bys. He ain't did none of that. But y'all want well, y'all laughing at a man's passing, his death. But then y'all in Memphis, you say any word about dead rappers, you got to sell it with them right then and there. <laughs> and in America, shout out to Charleston White for saying that out loud. Like you said, you can't say nothing about these rappers who live to destroy the very moral fabric of our race. Y'all worship them and kiss their ass. And they have nothing for you but death and destruction in their music and in their real lives. But then we try to make up shit like they gave back to the community. Black rappers don't give shit to the community. Turkeys ain't shit. Like Thaddeus Matthew said, the custom pastor said, what you doing standing in line for turkey, motherfucker? You get food stamps. Shout out to the custom pastor. Well, I'm saying, y'all let people get away with getting away turkey, man. They gave back to the community. Kevin Samuels gave more than a Negro rapper, more than an NBA player, more than a football player gave. He gave instructions that were able to be followed into improving your life as a man. All these other people I name, all they do is cater to the lower echelon of the behavior and the morality of black women. They don't ever challenge them to be better to be better as in lace to have how they raise, their, raise their children, how they carry themselves in these videos, in these movies, none of that. But Kevin Samuels did. Do this? Of course not. But he's the one right now, because I can pay tribute to Mr. Farrakhan, I can pay tribute to Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, I can pay tribute to Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Francis Wilson, Sister Shahrazad Ali, Dr. Joy Leary, and, uh, and uh, Nat Turner, Marcus Garvey, I can pay tribute to all those, but he's the one right now. <laughs> he's the one right now that, that, that touched this generation of thinkers. And so, you got folks like Vivica Fox want to bring her little tired ass on, the new, on her little tired ass podcast called Fox Soul. <laughs> and she always got something negative, but Vivica Fox... I don't see how you can open your mouth when you got so much 50 cent booty juice in your mouth. Yeah, you still eating food. You still ate 50 cents, as he said, his groceries. And how you got something to say about anything, baby, with your nasty self? What kind of grown woman eating a man beating his booty for breakfast? What kind of nasty, filthy foolishness is that? And But you got something to say. Every time, let me tell you something, baby, Fox. You better listen to me, bitch. Every time you open your mouth, you better brush your teeth or put a Tic Tac in your damn mouth before you talk. Because you got booty breakfast on your damn breath. Sick of you, Vivica. And it's not just Vivica. Every time you open your damn mouth, you better be sticking some gum in your mouth, helper. 
Because we do not want to smell nobody's crumbs from the anal region on your breath. That's just ridiculous. And that's the best you can do. Y'all had every, every chance in the world to invite him on Fox Soul. But y'all wouldn't. See, I need y'all to understand, black men and women who been black women who care. There's a reason that they do a blackout on black men like that. Because they don't want this. <laughs> Again. They don't want black men to be awakened. They don't mind and they don't mind triggering and empowering the thugs of our race. They don't mind these pants sagging, tight pants wearing, <sighs> swiveling hip TikTok dance doing motherfuckers. They don't mind them. Oh, effeminate dancers doing little tight ass shirt, tight jacket, tight pants, tight shoelaces, tight shoes, tight socks, tight belt, <laughs> tight ties. They don't mind them motherfuckers being on display. But when real men come out, they try to sh put a black out on it, shut it down. Hell, even in black America, you don't want the real brothers who are talking about holding you accountable. We always love to talk about racism. Thank you, black Democrats and white liberal Democrats and LGBT. We always love to talk about racism, which is a reality. But we're going to have to do some, have, have some accountability for our own behavior under racism, white supremacy. When are we going to do that? And that's all Kevin Samuels did. Those other people I named, uh, except for Sisters Arizona, Ali, and all those, they didn't talk about accountability, holding yourself accountable. They didn't talk about sisters. No, you're the one. You're the Pocahontas of our race. You left, you, you who the hell left the gate open. And standing there hoping White Zaddy will pat you on your weave. Good girl, T uh, Keisha. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. And she want to open her mouth to say something negative about Kevin, uh, no, a dead man. Which I, you know, what happened to uh, respecting the dead? Oh, when it's convenient for you and for somebody you like. All oh, that kind of stuff goes out the window. I get it. Cut it out. We're not going to let y'all continue to do that. It's not fair to him. And he got a family, he got daughters, he got ex-wives, he got all that. We don't think that's cool. I mean, y'all think that's cool. Don't you think that's cool that he gets that Vivica Fox and others? I even see D.L. Hughley talking about D.L. Hughley mentioned him, man. And then the day before he died, he had something to say about him because he said what he said about women 35 years and over. But D.L. Hughley, all of a sudden now, everybody want to get clout off the man's death. That's the part I have a problem with it. If you ain't like him here, you didn't, you didn't talk to him here, close your mouth, goddammit. Don't talk about him now. And that's the problem I have. And what's the problem? What was so bad about Kevin Samuels? Always. See, if you listen to his shows, you would have heard him say more than 10 times. All right, young lady, go off, marry a black man and make some black babies. <laughs> I think that offended black women more than anything. Because a lot of them have this, this white zaddy interracial fantasy. For him to tell black women who call there, Go off and marry a black man and make some black babies. Y'all know how political, how politically charged that is for a man with a with a platform like that that he earned through social media because they didn't put him on Good Morning America. <laughs> and then TMZ want to all of a sudden report a lot of stuff on him. TMZ don't report nothing that black men do that's positive. Everything they do, like when they had the uh, the people kitchen and cocktails when they when he told them wild. Them wild wildebeest not to dance on this damn furniture here in Dallas. TMZ in on that. Gonna try to say, well, do you think that was harmful? Shut up, Harvey Levin. Hell. Close your mouth. Mary Max says 1.4 million, 1.4 million followers. They didn't want him to have the global, I guess, the outright 50 million people like they do these other folks. They'll push a black clown and a black whore and a black pimp and a black trans and a black LGBT, but they don't ever want to push a real black man, a black man with no pronouns. And we think that's all right. And I'm, that's why I, was, I always wonder, black women, are y'all serious? Y'all always love to get on TV. And I'm gonna go back to this when y'all say that he was attacking black women. And, he, and I'm here to tell you he wasn't. He never, he always promoted the best. And he, what he did was explain to you just because you have a PhD, they don't make you valuable. And then also what he did was most important, 
He talked to you from how black men, how men, period, of all races really thought. And uh, most importantly, when he talked about high value, y'all purposely ignored what, no, purposely remixed what he said. Because he's very direct and very clear in his English. He said, high value men, these are the group right here. This, this, this 3% of men that make over, hell, two two or $300,000 millionaires. They live differently than people like me social workers they live differently than principals and and uh, plumbers and and high school math teachers they to make them better they just in a, another earning bracket but you got women and by the way let me go back now y'all see the women that they have right though none of them look like those callers all that called in and don't none of them look like vivica fox none of them even the age of vivica fox now if they got a woman vivica fox age it looks like her that means they met in high school they've been married 35 years but usually a man over 35 or 40 years old that's got $50 million in the bank, <laughs> you think he gonna go and fool with a biblical fox? I don't care if he is 50 years old. A 50 year old being there don't want no 50 year old broad. That's what he was saying. But you think, well, you know, y'all don't want no real woman. A real, no, you mean a real used up woman? That's what y'all mean to say. A real woman who know about herself. A real woman's out here. No, they don't want no real used up. Hell, I don't make any money right now. Well, you know, pennies. But if I won the lottery tomorrow, you think I'm going to go out and buy a used yacht? God damn it, it's going to be spanked brand new. That's what, what money do. Shout out to 3-6 Mafia, Project Pat. That's what money do. When you get that money, you go get everything new. Yes, I'm 53. You think I'm going to get a 45, a 50-year-old woman? Hell no. I don't want that now when I'm broke. But, but I'm now out here saying, I want a supermodel. I want this. I understand. He let us all know. Blue Collar Henry, stay in your place. You know, you, you, you average earners, $42,000 to $55,000. Y'all know that you, earn, you date on your level. And also, if you're a pot belly dude, making no money with a cross eye, you can't tell me how you want a young Angela Bassett, man. You're going to sit your ass down somewhere. That's what he was saying. But somehow that didn't go viral. It only went by when he was telling women, you go sit your ass down somewhere. They couldn't believe that somebody was telling them, look, nobody cares if you got, nobody cares you make $150,000 to $300,000. Nobody cares. You know who cares about women who make money and who got a nice house and a big car, big house and a nice car? You know who care about that? Bum ass loser dudes. Because real men have their own money, so they don't need you. Because one thing about women, they're women. If they can get any ledge, edge over you, if she makes more money, she going to let you know. And if you're a little bum-ass dude that's trying to live on, and she can be a 300-pound little chick that, that's got a Ph.D. in biology, and she'll still talk to you, bummy, like you're a bum. So won't you just be a man and earn your own money? Take advantage of your youth and get into the, get into the competition of things. That's what he said. So what's so mean about that? Letting you know, hey, this is where you this is your dating pool. Right here. And so the men men understood that. They accepted. And those who didn't accept what he said, guess what they did? They didn't say he needs to be canceled. They say, you know what, I'm finna hit the gym. I'm finna go and either demand a raise on my job, or I'm finna up my, my value by studying more and going to school. No, the women, <laughs> I ain't been going to lose no weight. They're going to tell me as I am. I'm valuable as I am. I'm a valuable person. Sure, you are valuable to, to Krispy Kremes. Sure, you are valuable, God damn it, to Burger King. You're very valuable to the restaurants, ma'am, and all the clothing stores. <laughs> and you're valuable to that person in the mirror. Yeah, who's that? She said you could do a whole lot more with your time. That's right. That's what he was saying. That's what he was saying. You do a whole lot more with your time. So, and, that, and so he was explaining, you know, that you can be, you can build yourself up, make you make yourself better. And some people didn't want to hear that because they're, they're Napoleonic. You're Napoleonic. Um, uh, arrogance and egotism. You know, <laughs> won't allow you to do that. 
Yeah, let me take a. Yeah, it won't allow you. It won't allow arrogant women to do that. It just won't. So. <laughs> yeah. The, and so. People will get it one day, but you're gonna get it when you're out here trying to hate on the brother. So, just letting y'all know that uh, it ain't gonna go down like that. And that's all he was saying. So, who gets upset about someone trying to, you know, tell you to improve yourself? It was his tone. It was his tone. Shit. <laughs> so, grown people try to use someone's tone as a reason not to hear the truth. You can't make this up. Grown people get mad. Man. I mean, the foolishness is endless. <laughs> the foolishness is endless. But anyway, continue to rest in peace, brother. We got you out here. You know, and, and the men who hear you, they're going to continue to improve on who they are. And the women who appreciate what you said, they're going to continue to improve they are because no, who they are. Or improve themselves. But a lot of y'all don't want to talk about that part. You want to talk about those few naysayers. Who got on Twitter or Facebook and celebrated his death. You know, these women, I know the mass majority of them, they black, they got cheering. And they got a lot of them. And they have sons. This man was speaking on, on behalf of your son. That's the part that's really sick. This man was speaking on behalf of your son. But y'all women with sons who thought it was, uh, who thought it was okay to celebrate his death. Y'all don't... Y'all don't feel the same way about the very people who put out music to set your sons up to go to prison and go and get murdered, murdered by each other, and murdered by the police. Y'all don't, y'all don't want them dead for some reason. Or if they die, you don't laugh and say good for them. And Vivica Fox, what you say? It's karma. You don't say that on social media. Nobody has ever uh, relished in the death of one of these Negro rappers. It's insane. <laughs> but this man here who wore a suit every night had the intellect of some of the, some of the most intelligent people I've ever met who were scholars. And he didn't have a PhD. <laughs> and could talk with the best of them. What did you say, Kevin, uh, Kevin Jackson? You said, and in school, they are word for word with the lyrics. That's right. <laughs> and it's, that's what's so amazing. Because as you notice, I'm saying some, because a lot of sisters out there who learned a lot, and they're, gonna, they're coming out more and more saying, I appreciated him. But y'all going to drown those voices out. You probably call them pick me's. <laughs> I'm talking to the haters. You know. And Vivica Fox, just, she's the one who inspired me to really go on up and do this, this live today. I just want her to know. Brothers ain't feeling you, Vivica, like that. That's why you have to date young dudes. Because guys your age ain't feeling you old tired behind. You're looking like that madam doll from the 80s. All you gotta do is pull that screen, open your fucking mouth. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. And, it, and it's not like he spoke another language. The man spoke clearly. But if you didn't want to hear the truth, well, you chose not to do it. And as the brother said earlier, people hear what they want to hear. And it's ridiculous. But uh, we ain't gonna let this one go. Y'all gonna let it go before we do. And we, yes, and we're still building. And let you know that brother, any age, any time, you can go out here and build and get yourself together. If you don't like the way, way your body looks, hit the gym. If you don't like the way your money, your paper's flowing, get out there and work hard and get you some more paper. If you don't like the way you live, work hard to get out that neighborhood. You can do it. This is, that's what he was saying. He was telling the women the same thing, but they rejected it because they've been made these false queens and false kings, kings even, in these neighborhoods, in their society. You know, I ain't never seen such a group of, un, uh, group of narcissists in my life. And it's funny, they want to call it every male, every man in America narcissist if he doesn't pay attention to what they're saying or ignore what they're saying. He's a narcissist, you don't even know what that word means. Because it's interesting, Everything they say is like is being a narcissist. That's them, self-centered. Think the world uh, evolves around you. You try to inflate yourself more than what you are. That's you. 
when someone doesn't pay you any attention, all of a sudden they get that label. Hey, you get that label if they don't pay attention to you. Isn't that something? The narcissist pointing out themselves or projecting it on men. Cut it out. But I digress. I ain't going to belabor this. I just want to let y'all know, and Vivica Fox know, and anybody else, we all over Twitter, Instagram, and all that. And shout out to Dennis Sperling, who's, who is like the official spokesperson for the family. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, who's uh, letting them folks have it. And it doesn't just have to, it doesn't just have to be Dennis Sperling. It can be, we can all join him and continue to join him. I know I'm going to do what I'm going to do on my social media. First, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. I know what I'm going to do. And I also know how to write, too. So my blog as well. So that's why you always have to be prepared. That's why I'm always telling black men, learn how to write. Learn how to speak and communicate points. Because this example that I love to give is if you've ever gone to graduate school, if you've ever done a paper in high school or in college, and you're discussing that paper with your professor, the one thing they ask is if you're doing a topic of something that happened, let's say, 30, 40 years ago or, or 10 years ago, and it was a hot topic back then, the first number one question they ask the class is, what was the debate? What were the counter arguments? See, what they like to do now is just put out all this information, this, this false narratives. And I try to encourage black men to understand the importance of putting out a counter argument. So when someone goes back and researches this, they can say, wow, those people said all these negative things about Kevin Samuel. Then you go and say, then you click on, da 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 where were the counter arguments? And you're going to see all of our videos, all of our blogs, all of our social media sites getting in their ass. That's why it's important to understand debates and, and, uh, and, uh, and how, why it's important to have, to put something on social media, a blog or something that serves as a counter argument to what people try to put out. I've always tried to encourage black men, speak up for yourselves. Write something, put a video out, a YouTube post. It's all gonna pop up in social media. He said, well, what, is, what does somebody else say about this? Because people, those people have mastered the art of communication and the importance of the written word. You know, we also need to join him in getting on his media outlets. Go to their websites, like he said. All these TMZs and these, and these Madame Noirs and whoever else, is, and uh, media takeout. Flood their damn uh, Instagram and Twitter page. Like, no, y'all lying. This is not what happened. Get on their ass. No, we got at least what 15 million black men in America. We should, we should, we should have, we should be a particular group that don't nobody want to mess with. But we're so divided on so many issues. And I think a lot of people don't just aren't aware. They don't care. They're so busy trying to pander, to try to get some money out of women's purses. Did y'all know Kevin Samuels was not a panderer to any side? And Kevin Samuels made more money and had more subscribers than the. Y'all almost made me cuss. Then the dudes who try to pander to the hurt feelings of women. And that goes back to when I was in the ninth grade, goes back to when you was in the sixth grade. Girls love it when you make them sick, when you make them mad. Because I heard and I saw it for myself. If they don't call you an asshole, they're going to play you. Every, every, every woman that you've been with, she, when she talks about you, he was an asshole. That means she loved your dirty drawers. And, and even though you, you act a plum fool with her, she would not stay out your face. Kevin Samuels did not pander to them. And they came nightly, up to 15,000 people a night. Some nights it was up to 22,000 people. One time it got close to 30. But on average, it was on average 15,000 people a night in his live YouTube and Instagram. It's supposed to be this horrible man, but these women could not stay away. And that's real life. Y'all out right here teaching your son to be gentlemen and all that. All right. Them the ones that end up shooting up all the schools and they're mad because chicks won't give them no play. And these girls got videos out telling y'all. Well, he too nice. Now, this is 2022. This ain't 1982 or 1992. They still saying it. And you guys going to get it. So that's why I'll be tripping. They say, man, you don't need to mistreat her like that. Yes, he does. Because she ain't went nowhere. Nope. So, so much so that she on his, his, the second baby with this dude who supposedly treats her like dirt. 
Y'all get it? That's what we need to be teaching young men. Because too many young men right here feeling left out because these single moms and these old simplified or simple man as fathers and teach these things. Well, you always be nice to women. You treat them nice. You don't ever disrespect no woman. See, all right. But the same person that's telling you that, he wasn't like that when he was young. See, he an old fool now and can't hardly do anything. So now he want to push his little... A little hate on you. Now you go out there and you be arrogant, you be cocky, you be successful. That's where it comes from. Be arrogant, be cocky, be successful. And let them look at you like, oh my God, he's so arrogant. He's stuck up. They love you. Now, they, if, now you know you've gotten that, com that, that comment of death when they say, you know what? You're so nice. You, you, you're the woman that any woman, you're the man that any woman would want. Now, you like little mama, that she tell you that you the man that any woman want, but guess who don't like you? Huh? <laughs> so it's not about being mean or disrespectful. It's about living in reality and understanding when women is nature. They like hunter gatherers, providers. They like warriors. You around here trying to cozy up and smooth up. I'm like, all right. Yeah, a few of them, few of the baby faces out there, a few of the baby faces of the world, they won a little bit, but the masses were... Well, the David Ruffins and the James Browns and the Ike Turners of the world and the so-called players. And there's something about that, fellas. And I'm going to close on this in a second or two. Women don't like you when you're single, for the most part. You say, I'm single. They, they're so crazy. Well, what's wrong with him? Uh, well, I'm, well, how come? But they, they like the dudes. It's like, yeah, I'm married or I got a girlfriend at home. And there's something about that. It just makes them hot for them. So y'all teach y'all sons the truth and stop trying to tell them to be gentlemen to these crazy folks. You're going to be in college, ain't going to never get no cooch. You're going to be at the workplace and ain't going to never have no. They find out he's a nice guy that buy lunch for everybody, buy drinks for everybody. That's crazy. Kevin, Kevin Jackson said, are you saying that we got to talk trash shit? No, Kevin. You got to not only talk, you got to halfway do some trash shit. But no, within reasons, of course, but enough just to make us sick. Oh, I can't stand him. I, he's supposed to come pick me up. He ain't even show up. You know, leave us stranded. Y'all hear the comedians? It's the truth. I'm here. I'm a mental health guy. Mary Max, you know. I'm, I'm, but I, but I, I can't stand to see so many young men doing the best. And so here's the part that, that, that pisses the women off, though. These very young men that were behaving as gentlemen, you walk past them, then they go on and become successful. And guess who grabs their hand? <laughs> when they become successful or who smiles at them. What did Kevin call them? Mylene, Becky, Mylene, Marisol, <laughs> Jasmine, the biracial chick. <laughs> Mylene, Becky, Marisol. And then they see this brother with his money and his things going on and all this stuff. And then there you go. As soon as they get some money, they go straight to the, the Asians, straight to the Latina. They go straight to... Now they go to whoever's smiling at them. But when he was trying to come up, you walking past him to go to the brother with the box Chevy thing. Or the brother who's had the money from selling dope or who had all the women in the baby mobiles. But anyway, shout out to Kevin Samuels and the contribution he made to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to society and to popular culture as well as urban culture because he, he reached across social lines. The educated, I mean, the so-called educated, the so-called hood, so-called those who pretend that they weren't looking, everybody. So anyway, y'all be cool. I'll talk to you later. Mary Max call me good when I hang this up. Uh, yeah, cause, damn, I got to hurry up because this is us is about to come on. Let me hurry up and get my ass back to the house. Y'all be cool. Peace. <laughs>